mailbag day. And we've got a reasonable amount of mailbag to get through uh, with our uh, one hour time limit that we're going to have to stick to because today is also an adoption day. Some of you may not know that yet because it, it really snuck up on us. Uh, we just found out who the adopters were uh, maybe yesterday. <laughs> maybe it was the day before I lose track of these things. And then uh, they said um, that they would like to pick up uh, Cistern. This is Cistern over here. They would like to pick up Cistern and um, Barrel, who are going together today after mailbag, probably around uh, around one in the afternoon. So these two are going to go. Uh, this isn't really their goodbye wave. <laughs> we'll we'll get a separate goodbye wave afterwards and put it in one of the micro close ups. That way it's uh, it's there. Although you can take these if you want, that's fine too. If you like those. So cistern, uh, cistern. I don't know what I just said. Silo. No, this is cistern and barrel, and they are going together. They're going to be sisters. Uh, they are sisters. I don't know what I'm saying. They're going to be adopted together, though. And let me just check the camera angles here real quick. Everything looks pretty good to me. So um, what that means, though, is that I did have to scramble a bit. Um, yesterday, I had to get through all the endowment sorting, which I didn't quite finish, if I'm honest. Um, I got the most of it done. Like, basically, anything that was sent specifically for one of these kittens or their mom has been sorted into the appropriate pile, by the way. Silo and his mom are getting adopted together and they are going to go uh, Tuesday the 28th, I think. I'd have to check the calendar, but it's on, it's on there. Um, so uh, they're going to get adopted together and that's real sweet. So that's the big deal. Um, now, of course, I was just saying uh, mailbag is going to have to end on time today, whether we get through all this or not. So I'm going to try to keep it moving and see if maybe if we're lucky, we can even end a little bit early. That'll give me time to wrap up sorting the endowments because, like I said, um, I sorted everything that was specifically for these kittens, but there's a whole bunch of stuff that, that should sort of be extra included in those, um, you know, things that were sent that were sort of like do as you see fit or things that were sent that were like, you know, this is for the kittens to take home in their endowments, but not specifically like this kitten or that kitten. So um, there's still all that to sort, uh, plus a lot of the treats that were sent, uh, I just kind of pile those up and set those, you know, separately so those still have to be gone through. So there's a, there's a fair amount of stuff. Plus, I've got to figure out which stuff here they're going to take with them. Honestly, though, I've seen these two specifically snuggled up in the brand new teddy bear bed. It's so cute. Uh, but I really think they should take it with them because they tend to snuggle up in it fairly often. And I think they would like that. Um, and maybe I'll give them this tunnel or something, too. You know, they've got, I like to send some familiar things home with them. And we'll find a blanket. And who knows uh, what else we can find for them. They don't really play with too much in the other room anymore. Um, so I don't know about that, but, uh, we'll find, we'll find a few things to send home with them in addition to the regular endowments. That way they've got a little bit of the comfort of KA for a while. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that adoption's happening this afternoon. There was one other piece of news that I wanted to cover on today's mailbag before we get rolling. Uh, and I should also check the chat, make sure that everything's working okay before I uh, really dive in. But, uh, the other piece of news is that last night, uh, Maggie, let's see here. Doo, 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 doo. Uh, last night, Maggie uh, apparently opened one of the doors and came in here with um, uh, with Thimble, which you know those two have clashed at the door quite a bit. And it, Maggie's the last cat that I would want to have come in here and meet Thimble, um, but. Uh, surprisingly, that happened. Oh, Thimble's letting herself outside right now. How cool is that? I know she knows how to use the cat door, but I've only seen her do it like once. Oh, she put her head out and then she decided to bring it back in. She decided not to go. She's still thinking about it though. Uh, anyway, um, Maggie is, like I said, the last of the faculty that I want to have brought together with Thimble uh, because they do fight each other under the door fairly often and uh, make a lot of noise about it. And that's probably what was happening. Maggie was fighting her under the door and something maybe wasn't entirely lashed and the door just kind of opened. That would be my guess if I had to guess. Um, and all of a sudden they were together. Um, that happened, I, I want to say it was around five, uh, 4 or 5 a.m. this morning. And I think I heard it because I woke up and I heard some noises and I was like, oh, I don't want to have to go down all the way down there and break anything up. Uh, but then the noises stopped right away and I was like, all right. And I think I must have just fallen back asleep. So um, 
when I came down in the morning, actually, when I woke up, you know, at seven, the first thing I saw was on the TV, Kitten Academy, there's Maggie sitting in the main room with Thimble. They're, they're both in the main room together. Maggie was on the gray cat tree and uh, Thimble was uh, on her cat scratcher, the infinity scratcher. And I, you can rewind to seven o'clock and see it for yourself. Maybe you can even go back a little bit before that and see what happened. So uh, what I'm told from the chat is, you know, like I said, around five, uh, Maggie and she ended up, they had a tough scuffle for sure. I felt like uh, who was in the Princess Bride, Count Rugen, like following the trail, uh, you know, and finding, oh, there was a fight and, you know, the loser ran off this way. So it, I felt just like that. I came down here, there's little bits of Maggie's fur was around. Nobody was injured. Maggie wasn't hurt. Just lost a little bit of fur like you do. That's what it's there for. Maggie's got a lot of extra armor when it comes to that fur armor. So she was fine. I checked them both out. They're both fine. There was no injury. Um, but there was a, a little bit of fur out here. So they obviously had a little bit of a tussle. Uh, and then Maggie let herself into the room and they decided to have a sort of uneasy uh, peace for a while, I, I'm, I'm imagining, uh, since that's where they were when I found them. Uh, it definitely was uneasy, though. It was definitely a little strained um, because uh, then we left the door open. I started giving everybody their food and stuff. And, you know, I'm like, all right, maybe this is going to work out. We'll see. Um, but, uh, as Logan and Maggie were both coming in here to hang out a little bit, she did kind of run up at them and she, I think she wants to defend this as her territory. So as long as they sort of keep their distance and, and they don't come too close to her and they leave when she asks them, she probably is okay, but they don't do that. So, she starts, uh, you know, she, she'll growl and, and hiss and then run up at them. And uh, probably, I think, again, that, that if I did just leave them alone to do their own thing, they'd probably have a little tussle and uh, one of them would run off. And she doesn't she doesn't chase them, which is a sign that she's not she's not trying to, like, you know, get rid of the other cat. She just wants them to leave their space, leave her space, which is, frankly, an all right relation uh, in, interaction. But I don't like to see them have that tussle. Um, you never know if it's going to go a little further than you want. So that's why uh, she doesn't have the door open. It's just, it's a lot to manage and we don't need that extra tension too. Everybody was real on edge this morning. Uh, in fact, Loganberry and everybody was, were having breakfast in the, in the dining room like they do. And Loganberry just jumped off the table onto the chair, does it a million times a day, but just the, the noise and action of that sent everybody r running away because it had all this tension plus a little silo running around all morning with his tail just poofed up uh, like a big old pipe cleaner. Um, but, uh, but you know, happy and playing and everything, but just, just you know, a lot of, lot of uh, tension. So we don't, we like to keep things calm around here as much as possible. So we're not going to invite her to hang out with them, but it's good to know. And I, I have said this too. I said this to, um, I think I said this to everybody on a close up, but I know I've mentioned it a few times that I do think, that she's a cat that can get along with other cats if you give it that time and if she's got her comfort and uh, especially if she's got her own space, you know, uh, that, that the other cats aren't going to go into that. That's the thing that I think would be the real winner for her. But, uh, but I do think fundamentally she can get along with other cats, uh, even if it would be a little bit of work. And I think this morning kind of proved it, uh, despite the fact that they had a little bit of a fight. So. Anyway, there we go. Let's get into this mail and uh, and see how much of it we can get done today. And then anything that we don't get done, we'll pick up tomorrow uh, like we do. But I feel like there's, there's at least a good chance that we can get through all of this. So we'll start with a letter. Oh, this is so cute. It's a little black cat with a pink nose, and he looks kind of like little bubbles or something. There's little splashes of gold paint on the letter. Um, very, very cute little piece of art there. It looks like a chalk cat and then like uh, gold foil for the, the little splashes. It's very cool. There we go. I'll show you that. Inside it says, Dear Mr. A and Dr. DJ, I love the little orange boy. Thank you for taking such good care of him and his sisters and their mom. I was worried about Teaspoon until I saw him chat out on solid food. He will be just fine. Little Teaspoon is quite a character with lots of personality. All of his sisters are super cute, too. It brings me so much joy to check on them each day and see them grow. With many thanks and much appreciation, Joanna. Uh, Joanna, thank you so much. Uh, that, is, that is really sweet of you. This is an adorable card. I know Teaspoon is a big favorite of people. Um, I've obviously been keeping a real close eye on him myself. He does a great job of eating. Uh, he, he took a, I, I think we've got him to start using the litter box now. Um, he, he wanted to 
I put him in it. He'd specifically get out. Like, no, I'm not. I'm not using that. I want to do the floor. But I think we've got him to use the litter box now, and he's going to probably stick with that, which is good. Um, so he's in he's in real good shape developmentally as far as that goes. He's definitely a little bit behind all of his sisters, uh, though. Where he's they are all playing and tracking objects much better, and their eyes are you know they'll look right at you. They'll look at what they're trying to, to attack. You know they can really focus in on things. He's not quite there yet. He's probably a good week or two behind them on that front where uh, he doesn't quite focus in on the objects, even the ones that you can tell he wants to play with and track. He's not he's not quite getting it yet, which is normal. That's that's the way kittens are. And then they grow out of it. And I'm just saying that I think his sisters are already out of it mostly. And he's he's a little bit behind. So as you would expect, um, you know, I think that he actually is a little bit younger than that. Uh, so. We've been over that before. We don't have to get into it now. Um, all right. This is actually from Catherine LR on Discord and was dropped off um, when I was going through the endowments yesterday. Uh, Catherine LR is the adopter of Trinket and had um, dropped off a bunch of stuff for endowments for these kids. Really generous, wonderful stuff. I, I would have brought it up here and opened it, but it was already sorted out with the endowments in the basement, so I'm not going to. And I think she just... Uh, describes what it is in the letter. So I'm just going to read the letter here. Um, it says, Dear Mr. A and Dr. DJ, first, John and I would like to thank you for all you've done and continue to do for mom, cats, kittens, and pregnots. Being chosen to bring Trinket into our home has been the best thing to happen to us in a long time. Uh, Trinket's special brand of crazy, limitless affection and healthy dose of playfulness is what we all needed. Let me share with you just a few things about our Trinket. She follows us wherever we go with particular affinity for the kitchen. There was the sub incident where I foolishly left several sub rolls in a bag out where she could find them. Trinket, wearing the guise of official taste tester of the strange and new, ripped open the bag and took several healthy chomps out of one of the rolls. Trinket had to settle for the role of sous chef. She'll sit and watch me prepare food, ever curious to new smells. If we aren't capable, careful, she will attempt to swipe something from a plate or countertop. She'll also run to the curate when John makes a cup of coffee. Next, we can classify this section as the same thing happens every night or how we learn to decipher Trinket's vocabulary. Number one, the trill. Trinket trills when you call her, much akin to, yes, I heard you, I'm coming. However, she also trills when the food bowls are empty, when the auto feeder is set to go off but hasn't quite dropped its treasure, and when she is bored or looking for something to mess with. Number two, the Marge Simpson hoof. This noise sounds exactly like Marge Simpson's annoyed grunt. This particularly cute noise is a clear sign that Trinket is displeased. We tend to call it her vaguely dissatisfied alert. Number three, the I'm carrying a toy in my mouth and being extremely loud about it meow. Much like Ocean, Cahoots, and other mom cats, Trinket will pick up a fuzzy toy, always a fuzzy or soft toy, and carry it down the long hall to the living room while meowing at a very high volume. When she gets to the living room, she drops it, and then nothing. That's it. It's a more than a little anticlimactic, and John is trying to show her how to give the toy to him to toss it, but nope. She merely announces the arrival of the toy to the living room. Number four, the I'm by myself and what company loud meow, the sound that so many mom cats make on the screen that certainly sounds like a sonorous hello. When this happens from the bedroom, sometimes Mooch goes to see what's up or we call her and she'll trill and run down the hall to us. That brings me to the running. Miss Trinks can sound like a defensive line from a high school uh, football time when she thunders down the hall. She loves to play, okay, now you chase me with Mooch. As he is also an enthusiast of the same game, it is a winning combination. Uh, Trinket is one tough girl. Much like that awesome depiction of the spyglass takedown, Trinket has no fear of Mooch's size. No sneak attacks here. Trinket takes the frontal assault and keeps the pressure on. Again, Mooch is a, fan a fanatic of the wrestling game as the breakaway often leads to a chase and another takedown. They play so much, it's great to see a nearly 12-year-old cat run about as he does. On to the princess bed that came home with her. She loves that bed. She scratches the board inside for praise. She hides when she's hunting her brother or our feet, and she uses it as a boogie board slash surfboard across the floor. She's so affectionate and will demand attention at any time of day. 
She learned Mooch's patented climb up John's wheelchair wheels to get a scritch and has perfected the request by adding a trill to it. She loves to dig under the blankets at night or snuggle in for hours. We're still working on picking Trinket up. She's a cuddler if it's on her own terms, but she's not quite there yet with being picked up for more than a few seconds. Her purr is amazingly loud and strong. I've rambled on long enough, but wanted to share how much fun it's been since she came home. As for the boxes I've left, uh, we put together a collection of Trinket's favorite toys. My personal favorite is the Safari playset. We call it Trinket's Nut Hut. There is one box each marked for Cistern, Barrel, and Silo. Inside the playset, uh, inside is the playset toys and one or two pack of Churus crab and chicken flavor, Trinket's play favorite. The favorite. I guess that works too. Uh, the other two packages are as follows: one for Thimble and one for Nibbles. It's one of the small cat trees that Trinket watches TV from. There's a top bed and a small cube, a perfect ambush point when she hides in it. Uh, that's actually, I don't know how well you can see these pictures, but it's actually in this picture. You can see it here with the uh, thing on top. Okay. Um, let's see. Trinket and Mooch have their own Instagram, which is on Instagram as Trinket in Mooch. That's a Trinket underscore N underscore Mooch. That's the letter N, not the word N. Trinket underscore N underscore Mooch. I've added pics now and then to the photo frame you have for alums. I, you know, I don't even know how that works, but I love it. I just, I would look at that every day and it is just charming. So thank you for that. Uh, thank you for helping to bring Trinket to us. Without Kitten Academy and the incredible work you do, opening your home and your fostering to all, this wouldn't have been possible. Take care, Kathy and John. Uh, apologies for the black and white pics. I didn't realize my color cartridge needed replacing. <laughs> That's cute. Uh, thank you so much. I can see uh, the pictures are a uh, little trinket laying on her back, all cool. Trinket in, I guess this must be the nut hut. It's a pop-up cube that looks like a jungle print. Uh, and then trinket and mooch each in their beds. And finally, a packet of what appear to be rolls that have been chewed through, including the roll inside. Uh, very familiar. So thank you so much, Catherine LR on Discord. Uh, for all of that, for the wonderful letter, I love hearing about the alumni and the descriptions of how they behave. Um, not only is it just wonderful to hear it from them and how they're doing, but it's also a real testament to how loved they are in their new homes, and that means so much to me. So thank you for that. Uh, we got to keep rolling, though. Uh, I've got to get all that stuff out for them uh, and ready to go. So lots and lots still to do. Now I saw um, one package here at least one package that said specifically it was for these kids, and I want to make sure we get that done. Here we go. Uh, from Etch and Trace, oh, to Thimble and the Tiny Tub. So let's start with that just to make sure we got it. Even though we might get through everything, hopefully we will. Oh, wow, Silo's having a real run on that wheel. I don't know if that's all on the screen or not. Oh, 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 yeah, don't get under there while it's going, buddy. <laughs> he, uh, he tried to go under it then, and that does not work. It's like, whoa, this is moving. Okay, good. Now that is on the stream a little bit. It's just over my head. Okay. Whoa, hey, then, oh, you can't go. They're <laughs> trying to go both ways. That does not work. You guys are good at that wheel. My goodness. When the kittens grow up with it, um, you know, they, they actually use it on their own once in a while. That's great. Okay. Let's see here. They <laughs> got some energy to work off. That's important. So from Etch and Trace, dear Mr. A and DJ, our human is running late again on sending a package to KA and forgot to bring a card and had to go hunting in the hallways at work to find a box. She's so disorganized, but we love her. Uh, my, my inflection there is a little weird. Uh, I like it though. We're going to stick with that read. Uh, we saw, keep rolling, yes. We saw how much fun the tiny tubs were having in the tissue pit during the last mailbag and wanted them each to have a pack of colorful tissue paper so their adopters can get the fun started when they move to their forever homes. We added in some crinkle balls and a dangling wand toy too. If this package arrives too late for one or more Thimble's family, you can deploy or endow as you see fit. There are no good newspapers here and our human is not poetic or funny, so we'll say goodbye here and let you get on with the next packages. Love and Spoogles from Etch and Trace with lots of muse, kvetches, trills, and chortles tr 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 to transcribe by Pattern Weaver. Thank you so much. Um, 
That's really sweet. It got here just in time. So uh, excellent timing on that. And uh, I want to point out to their adopters, uh, that's a great set of tissue paper. Uh, the original tissue bit that we did, we just cut the top off of a cardboard box and used that. And if you can find a, a big cardboard box, you know, even a medium sized one, uh, that makes a great tissue bit. So you don't have to invest in the in the big, you know, like ball pit that we have. Um, I, I think that's wonderful. So this is for barrel, and it has the tissue, like you said, it's got a wand with these balls on it and crinkle balls, exactly as you have described it yourself. And there are four of those and a also a, uh, a silo in the box here. Oh, they're all going to take turns now. Wow, these kids are into everything right now. They are ready for some new experiences in their life. Okay, uh, that's what we got in here. That means we have four of those. So wonderful. Thank you so much. That'll get added directly to their endowments as I uh, sort of finalized their packing this morning. So let's not move that entirely out of frame if they're going to keep climbing in there and play. We'll see if that works. Fun. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pat and Weaver Edge and Trace. So much appreciated. All right. I think that was the only thing that said it was for them. So we're just going to, from there, kind of keep going and see what happens. All right. All right. Let's see if there is a no. Wow. This is very orange. What is it? Is it a, I can't actually make heads or tails of it from here. It's just a very orange bed. I can tell it's a bed because it's got this rubber grip stuff on the bottom. Let's see if there's a description or if I'm going to have to open it and let it pop up to 10 times its regular size. Aw, it is a carrot. That's crazy. Uh, this says, Dear Mr. A and DJ, I couldn't resist and sent a second package that contains the cute bed and play mat for the cute tensils. The toy is for little Mr. T. It matches perfectly. Thanks for all you do. You guys made my life much better with K.A. from Madam Amy Lotta. Oh, on Discord. Thank you, Madam Amy Lotta. Well, I have to see what a carrot bed looks like, so we are going to have to let this thing pop up. Uh, let's see if I can open it carefully, though. Car carefully? Yes, carefully. That works. It works. Come on. Uh, let's see. So I don't accidentally cut through it. Okay, dokey. Oh, wow. That's really, it's starting to pop. Okay. Oh, wow. Did you hear that? One more. It's like, uh, it's like when you open a tin of those uh, crescent rolls or something from uh, Pillsbury and you pop that seam and the whole thing goes poof, like that. It's scary every time. It gets me uh, shocking every time, I guess is what I should say. Not scary. It's not like I run and hide every time I want to make some uh, orange cinnamon rolls. Okay. Oh, well, isn't that cute? It is. It's like, a, it's like a giant carrot. Wow. And it's got a carrot tangling from it. It's a little floppy. Um, but you can see it's got some carrot texture to it, uh, which is cool because they didn't just do it in straight lines. There's some gaps in it, so it really has some texture. These guys are right in it. I mean, they're already silos in it. Uh, on this side, it's got a little welcome mat that is the carrot uh, greens. It's got a orange colored uh, mat inside that can come out, very cushiony. And then it's got a little dangly carrot on it, too. And how fun is that? That's super hi. Okay, well, okay, you can break it in, but this is for your little brother. You haven't even met. Oh wait, I think they have met. They've all met just a little bit uh, when the we've been taking the smaller kids to the bedroom for visits once in a while, and so they have all met. Uh, they don't they don't get along, but they have been okay. First off, teaspoon uh, the little orange boy that this is for thinks that every other cat, especially the ones that are bigger than him, any big cat is for nursing on. That's what they're for. So he, he runs straight up to them and, and immediately tries to find where to nurse on them, uh, which irritates them, most of them quite a bit. None of them are putting up with it. Not even Logan Berry will put up with that. Uh, so he gets a lot of corrections from them where they kind of hiss and push him away, and he doesn't, he doesn't understand. Uh, he's not offended by it either. He just doesn't seem like he registers at all what's going on. He just wants to nurse. Like I said, he's not he's not all there yet, but he's coming. Uh, so that's Tim and also Silo's re interaction with the little kittens tends to be like that. Like he's really interested in them and he wants to see what they are. But if they get too close, he hisses like back off, keep your distance, um, which is fine. That's not like I've said before a million times. That's a great interaction where he's not he, he, he's going to eventually he would be friends with them. Uh, but they've got to be respectful and take their time getting there. So uh, exactly like you would expect. Now that's never going to fit back in this bag. That's not even an option. So we're just going to set that there. Maybe we'll open one of these big boxes next and we can put it into one of these big boxes. That's super cute. 
All right, let's see. So this says on the outside is for Joy. I'm sorry, it's from Joy F. Uh, great to hear from you, Joy. It's been, I think it's been a little while. Uh, and let's see. Um, it says it's for Nibble specifically. So, the, oh, wow, I recognize this. I'll tell you, there's the old one of these is in my office. It's been there forever. And both when Logan and or Custard are in my office, they live on this. Uh, this is a very popular item. Everybody has loved it. Everybody sits on it. It is a cardboard scratching sofa. I see it's a little bit different than the one that we have. It's got a different sofa pattern to it, but it's really nice. Uh, it's wonderful. And all cats. I mean, this has been a hit with everybody. It's a great little um, uh, cardboard scratching bed uh, that they love to sit on. This says, hi, Mr. A and Dr. DJ. Mama said we could send Nibbles something special. She's such a good mom and her babies are adorable. Thank you for all you do. Kitten hugs from Bayou, uh, Lila, Abby, and Kara Bean from Joy F and the Kitty Crew. Joy F, uh, Joy, thank you so much for sending this. And it is uh, a wonderful gift. Like I said, and we have, this is, you know, some things are hit or miss and some things are just a hit. This thing is just a hit. Everybody loves it. I'm gonna write nibbles on it in case it doesn't get deployed before she graduates. We will know who to give it to. Uh, it's useful that this plastic wrap is here. I can just write on it. Perfect, she is going to love this. And you might have noticed what a fan she is already of sitting on the uh, cardboard bed that's in there right now. So I have a feeling this will be right up her alley. If it, even if it wasn't something that everybody loves, I feel like she absolutely would. Uh, now the big carrot, I think we can probably remember who that's for, and I don't really have any other way to label it right now. So we'll just put it in there and cross our fingers and hope for the best. And keep moving. Joy, thank you so much one more time. Okay. Uh, nothing on the outside to distinguish this one. Oh, but this must be the rest of that, uh, the previous note. Let's see. Oh, no. Actually, I just saw orange and thought it was, but that's not very orange at all. After all, look at all those colors. Let's see. Oh, and some tea bags. And all the note says is a gift for you. Enjoy your gift. Hmm. Well, perhaps there will be another clue uh, somewhere further down the line. But for now, that's all we've got is a gift for you. Uh, but you did say the second patch contains bed and play mat. Uh, and also, these are tea, I see, these are tea bags probably for Mr. T. Madam Amy did, did spell it, toys for little Mr. T, it, T E A. Uh, it matches perfectly. So I'm guessing this is also from Madam Amy, and this is the mat. So yeah, this is what you referred to. Okay, good. So you sent a uh, second package that contains the bed and play mat, and the uh, we've got the carrot bed as well. So that's uh, okay, good. That all I think that all adds up actually. So this is let's take a look at what this mat looks like. I just want to see. I'm sure you want to see as well. Uh, but again, I can't get it open without just wrecking it. So there we go. Lots of run of this morning. Oh, this is such a cute little play mat. Look at that. And it's got pockets that are crinkly, and each pocket has another toy in it. Well, that's that's really cool. Each toy has a, it's on a little string and it's attached in a pocket so they can pull it out and play with it, but it doesn't get lost. Oh, and there's some Velcro pockets in the middle. That could be a, a bigger challenge with a catnip stuck into it. And the whole thing is in the shape of a little catnip, uh, looks like a cat on this side, but if you turn it around, it's an owl. Oh, look at that. It's both, this would be the nighttime side. It's got a nice soft, um, nice soft texture to it on the nighttime side. They're both soft, but the other, the nighttime side's all floofy. And this one says a woof. I don't know why, but that's okay. And it's got the cat and uh, in the corner, there's a little cat. Oh, a little cat and dog logo, I see. Very cute. Now, of course, this has strings in it, so it's only for supervised play. So they'll get to use that only when we're watching. Um, we can't just leave it out all the time, but isn't that adorable? It's really sweet. And the T for T, oh, and of course, I'm going to label it just in case I'm brain dead the day that we start distributing these. I might look at it and not realize. They're actually called T teasers because we can use them to tease teaspoon. Perfect. I should probably start keeping some tape or something in this box so I can label things that I can't label otherwise. 
Ah, next time. Okay. I have lots of tape. I just have to bring some over for it. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Madam Amy. Uh, here, I'll put your note in there too. And that way, maybe that will be another clue that we need someday. Ooh. Well, these are some familiar toys that have arrived without any sort of note. And on the outside, there is nothing. Okay. Well, it's a little mystery. It's not a mystery what they are or what they're for, just a mystery who sent it. So uh, thank you to whomever you were, uh, whomever you still are, we hope. Uh, we've got fun tubes, we've got the regular springs, and we've got fancy springs uh, that have that, that wrap around the, the spring part. So all really, really fun toys that the kittens are going to love. And I'm going to put these um, straight into the endowments for... Um, I, I guess these can go into the endowments for, uh, well, there's two sets and there's two sets of adopters that are picking up these kittens. So I think that's a pretty good fit. And whoever sent these can uh, yell at me about it if that's not what they intended. But I think they're gonna go into the endowments for these kids because that's perfect. And those are such great toys for them to enjoy. And those will last a while. Uh, so until they all get pushed under someone's fridge and sofa, like they do. The kids are enjoying that. It's pretty warm out, isn't it? Well, almost. It's above freezing for a change, so that's nice. Is your mom outside? Did she get out here? I don't see her anywhere else. She probably is. I kind of see a shadow there that could be her, but I can't tell. Oops. This is another one for Anne. Remember Anne? I didn't even see what was in there, but I felt it, and I thought, that doesn't feel like it's for us. <laughs> it's funny how I can tell just by touch. It feels like some sort of bottle of, uh, I don't know, uh, vitamins, maybe. Um, so I was like, that's a weird thing. I wonder what it is. And then I looked at the address, and that's for Anne, who is, uh, yes, you, you might have heard of Anne on a previous mailbag. She's become a friend uh, who we get her mail on a regular basis. Even when I brought the last one back to the post office, and handed it over to the clerk. The clerk even said, oh, this keeps happening to you too, specifically. Um, so uh, yeah, that's fine. It doesn't, it doesn't bother Ann, it doesn't bother me. So uh, I've got now her phone number and I text her about it and I'm like, you got your mail again. <clears throat> so I haven't yet told her that she can tune in on Saturday and watch me open her mail live on the internet. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, you know, that's the way it is. All right, so that's for her. We will leave that. Oh, this is cute. It says, it's okay, and there's a drawing of a note. That's some next level. Uh, I like that. Was there something on the outside to say, well, I covered up the address. Nothing else. Okay. Let's see. Here. The note says, dear Mr. A and Dr. DJ, hello. My mom was making something new, and I thought it looked really neat. When she was done, she put it down on the couch, and I saw it was just the right shape for sitting. I don't really fits, but I sits anyway. I liked it. I made happy paws and purred and laid down. Mom said I couldn't stay. She said the pink bed was for somebody called Nibbles. It was sized right for her. She had to toss me a couple treats to get me to move out of the bed. I did, but it was okay because the next day she made me a blue bed that was bigger. Still though, my sister Annie kept going back to the pink bed. She doesn't fit either. <laughs> But I thought Nibbles would like to know that her bed was well tested before Mom put it in a box to send to a place called Connect I Cut. Mom says the bed can go through the washing machine if Loganberry gets too close to it just to hang it to dry. For my part, thank you for putting all the toys out for the TV cats and kittens to play with. I like to watch them while Mom works on the couch next to me. Mom also hung a bird feeder. I get to watch bluebirds, starlings, and woodpeckers all day. Lots of love from Tam. P.S. Mom says, S.D. Grady says hello and thank you again. Thank you so much, S.D. Grady. And uh, this bed that you've sent. Oh, wow, this is so nice. So it is a cute little crocheted, crocheted bed. I'm going to go with that, okay? Uh, and look at that. This does look like something that would instantly attract a cat. And uh, I like that it's uh, it's not it doesn't just like change its shape here. It's actually got a little bit of a ridge around the the bend so that you can really see that it's uh, it's more of a cylinder, I guess, than like rounded like some of these are. Very cute. Um, it's beautiful. The pink I think is a perfect match for. And uh, yes, uh, Nibbles is a very tiny cat, so this looks like a perfect size for her. Uh, we've weighed her, and she's just under seven pounds. I'm going to keep that with your note, 
Um, that way, maybe even their adopters can have your note. Um, and Or, you know, we'll end up deploying it ahead of time. We'll see. And put it right back in there. Actually, this is so nicely packed. We can just leave that all together. I'm going to write nibbles on here. Uh, SD Brady, and Tam, thank you so much. Uh, nibbles, B B L E S, perfect. That's excellent. Thank you. Uh, she is going to love it. She is such a sweet little kitty, and she is. Uh, she's just about like done, or she she's wanting to get away from her kittens a lot more these days. Uh, you see her at the door sort of waiting and asking to come out. And just yesterday, I tried to introduce her to Logan, by the way, to see how she'd get on with the faculty, and she did fine for her first introduction. She definitely got hissy when he would get close to her, but as long as he stayed a foot away, she was okay with it. Um, so uh, I think that that's going to work out. We just, you know, we like to do uh, sort of repeated introductions. So we, we introduce them and let them hang out together for maybe five minutes. And the whole time I'm feeding them each baby food, which was keeping them both very happy. And then when she stops focusing on the baby food and starts paying more attention to him instead, that's when I know it's time to stop and take her away. So that's what we did. And we'll do that a, probably a few more times before we get comfortable enough to let them just hang out. But uh, I do think that, that Nibbles is, is not going to have any particular trouble being introduced to the other cats. She hasn't shown the signs of being aggressive towards other cats at all. So I think she's going to be an easy one uh, for those introductions. We'll find out. So far, so good is my point. Okay, this says to Kitten Academy, attention, Diane. So, uh, Diane, thank you in advance. Let's see here. Uh, one more try. This, I can tell this is packed really full, and I don't want to cut all the way through it. Uh, so let's see here. Carefully. All right. Oh, some cute little blankets. All right, let's see if we can see. Oh, I think it's stuck to the other side of the package. Okay, there we go. We got it out. Perfect. Well, that's just an empty box. And this is a beautiful little baby blanket. Oh, and it's so soft on the one side. Wow. Uh, so this is one that has that Sherpa. Uh, and I love this sort of pale teal cyan. Actually, I, you know, I almost describe it as almost a seafoam green. It's got a little more blue in it than that. Really pretty, a lovely color. And then on the outside, uh, we have a, a softer, more flannel uh, material that has little jungle animals on it. It's got an elephant with a bird on his back, a lion and a panda bear. So very, very cute. And, uh, oh, there's the note. Okay, good. Uh, we've also got a quilted blanket here. It's pretty uh, plain gray quilted, really, really soft and lovely. Made out of sort of a knit stretch, uh, like a t-shirt material. Really nice to touch. Okay. Um, I don't have the letter opener out. I thought I did, but that's okay. We'll just open this by hand. Such a cute letterhead with pink little uh, stencils on it. <laughs> but on the inside, it's got the same pink stencils, and then in pink print, it says a little dirt from Diane. <laughs> that's cute. Okay. Mr. A, Dr. DJ, I've had these before the three kittens were born, Beryl, Silo, and Sister, and I was hoping the blankets folded in half would fit perfectly in the birthing box. Better late than never, will be plenty more kittens being born, so will be used many times. I've been watching K.A. since Port's little orange portlets were born. My first gift was a pair of blue socks covered with orange kittens. Watched you wear them one at a time. I thank you and DJ for all you do for the mom, cats, and kittens. I always wanted to adopt from you, but I am in Vermont and don't want to venture that far away. I have two cats now, Spooky, all black, and Louie, who is orange, that's enough to keep up the, um, that's enough. Keep up the close-ups, keep well, and keep it kitten. Thanks, Diane, who is also the other DJ. Diane, thank you so much. That is really cute. I like your letterhead there. Uh, these are lovely. They will be perfect for that box. And now, I, now that you say it, I look there and I see there are two blankets, um, both the same, and I think they will be excellent for that birthing box. They are going to love it. So thank you so much for that. And as you say, yes, they will definitely get used over time. So uh, uh, thank you very, very much. That is thoughtful and wonderful. And uh, I'm really glad that you sent it in due time. Don't worry, we run on that schedule. Uh, it is absolutely fine.
I would be the last one to, uh, to, to say that someone was late on anything. <laughs> All right. This says Kitten Academy. Uh, inside is what is clearly a pink, large-sized marshmallow bed. Uh, I say clearly, uh, the only reason that I know that it is clearly a pink marshmallow bed is because the note says pink 50 cm, which means definitely a marshmallow bed, even though the note here says round dog. Uh, it is not a round dog. I know this is a pink marshmallow bed. Um, unfortunately, oh wait, there might be a note here under the flap. There it is. Aha. Dear Nibbles, we are so glad you're at the Academy. We hope you enjoyed many snoozes at your forever home. Love to Heaney and Flair. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Heaney and Flair. You send these for every mom cat. I hope they all love them. Uh, so let's just write Nibbles right on there. That's perfect. Excellent. A big old pink uh, marshmallow bed that can go in this pile of stuff. We already have a one box downstairs started out with endowments for Nibbles and crew in it, so we're on that path. Um, but of course, the focus today is going to be on getting cistern and barrels endowments put together. Um, so, as soon as we finish this box, actually, we get to get uh, back to work on that. So, let's see here. Maybe. Well, I think we recognize what this is. I say we, I mean, I do. I definitely know exactly what this is. I'm guessing this is also from Tahini and Flair because it contains a whole bunch of the ball towers. Excellent choice. There's not actually a note, is there? It's stuck under a flap again. Neither one of these is the note. Right, let me check under the flaps real quick. Hang on. Just make sure. Sometimes static sticks into this too when they have plastic on them like that. Oop, oop, but no, okay, no static. I just want to double check. It's Dini and Flair, but I think if, it's, if there's no note, we can assume that pretty safely. Now, there's no note, but they always send this. This has to be them. So I'm just going to go ahead and give them credit. Uh, thank you very much once again to Dini and Flair. It's perfect. And I will just write for um, the Q-tensils, uh, DJ's finest class name. What a great pun that is. Uh, so I will write the questions for the Q-tensils, and we will bring that right down for them. Uh, that concludes Mailbag. I was, I'm happy. We get to actually end a little bit early, which I was hoping for, because I have a lot of work still to get done today. So we will get to it um, as soon as I write Q-tensils on this box. Perfection. There we go. Good. All right. Well, I'm not going to waste any time. Uh, thank you guys so much. I'm going to hop right up, get this stuff cleared out, and uh, then uh, get back to work on making sure everything is ready for that adoption. And don't worry. Sometime between now and then, I'll take uh, you know an extra five minutes. We'll do a micro close-up of the goodbye waves of the kids, and that way it will get published by the robots tomorrow, or uploaded by the robots tomorrow and published when I get a chance to log in and click the publish button. So, uh, which should be you know in uh, tomorrow, reasonably time. Uh, that's easy for me to do from my phone, so I tend to do it whenever I remember. Okay. Yep, up and in. Hi, I see you're playing with a plastic, but it says right on it's not a toy. <laughs> you're gonna help deflate these? Thank you. Thanks, that's helpful. Can I get this one too? Good, good work. Okay, you got it. Any others? Such a helpful thing. No, okay. Okay, good work, Joe. Is your mom outside? Did she get out there? No, yeah, no. That's just a reflection of Silo who's inside in the sunny spot. Okay.
go upstairs. This stuff will all go downstairs. So let's see if we can take all one trip. I think we can mine all of this in one box, actually. Let's do that. Oh, no, we can't. No, we do. Wait, yes, no. Wait, what did I do? Now I'm confused. These are for the older kids, and this is for nibbles. All right, this is for nibbles. These are for the older kids. There we go. I got myself confused somewhere. Okay, that's all for the older kids. What do you mean with four perfect? And these are nibbles, and this is nibbles, and these are for the younger kids. Perfect. These are also for the younger kids and nibbles, but I don't think we can combine those, so we'll just do this. And teaspoon specifically, so when I look at that orange stuff in there and wonder, oh, was this all for teaspoon? I will be able to tell myself, yes, yes, it was all for teaspoon. Okay. Now, I think I'm gonna have to make two trips no matter how I slice it. So let's just go. Let's just go. Tissue paper around? Where are you out before your big trip? You can do that. These are going towards the kitchen. Going towards the upstairs, and this is going towards the downstairs.
Get you to the diving board. Oh, right in. Okay. Well, that's it for mailbag. So I'm going to wrap it up here, and in just a minute we'll end the archive. Of course, you can keep watching. These kids are probably going to play in the tissue pit a little bit. I'm out of breath, I'm running up and down the stairs. I need to start working out again. It's been a long time. Whew. All right. Well, thank you all, and this will be the end of the archive. Uh, we'll see you next time.